This is Code.org, and I made a super duper awesome paper, rock, scissors uh, video game. Well, as awesome as that can be, I think it's awesome. It's a really good example of some games that you can make in Code.org's App Lab. And it will give you ideas if you are in an AP course of what you might be able to do uh, for your final project in there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink the toolbox and let's first play it. Let's let me show you what it does. Play. But uh, uh oh, they're both paper, right? And yeah, it's simple, but I want to show you the code that's actually working here. Rock scissors. So obviously rock crushes scissors. Kwapow. And we got a point. Yay. Play. Scissors cuts paper, yep, and it is completely random, I have not rigged it, and paper and paper, nope. And notice the color changes slightly each time I hit play, fancy. Uh, it does that because sometimes it will stay the same, so maybe we do paper, rock, scissors, and both player picks the same hand. I want to know that it actually changed, so the color changes to let us know that. And that was a tie, up, and three, you get the picture. So let me dive into how this works so you can make your own, so you can steal some ideas for this and make them super awesome. Um, the code for this is going to be posted below in the description. So check out the code. Uh, it's going to be with the game, play the game, and use it, change it all up, make it cool. When you build something awesome, post it below. All right, the code. So let's see what we got here. Variable hands equals. So this is an array. An array is a list, remember? And what I'm storing in our list is these weird icon, FA, hands. What that is, though, it's these. If I go over here to design, my hand is actually, I always just use icon, so it's kind of easy for anyone to do. If you hit choose an icon, it's this stuff, OK? And in the drop down, if I click here, oh, it's not going to give it to me right now. Um, it will, oh, when you're doing a property, when you're doing a property, it will give you as a drop down if you do change here. I'll show you. Uh, red. If I do change image, okay, and now I have all these image options. That's what's stored up here. So I'm going to undo that. And what we're going to do is use this list to rotate through what we're going to be um, fighting with, what our hands are going to be. Here's our blue score and our red score. Let's get to the functions. So on event, click. So on the event that we click the play button, click, and it knows it's the play button because of the ID down there. You see ID play button. So on the event that that is clicked, this function will execute. It's going to run. And what do we do in this? Well, first we make this variable random blue and random blue is set equal to a random number between zero and hands dot length minus one. That sounds super complicated. Well, the computer's going to say, wait, what? Hands dot length minus one. Uh, 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 oh, wait, zoop. here's hands. OK, so I have to be but hands dot length. Well, how long is this? One, two, three. But Keep in mind, the computer will say, okay, three. So hands.length is three. The reason I subtract one from this is because I'm going to use this as an index to get an index. And if I'm getting an index with it, index is, this is one, two, three items, but it's zero index, one index, two index, because index start at zero, which is why I'm asking for a random number between zero and the length of hands minus one, which is two. So I'll get zero, one, or two to be the random blue hand for that turn. And for the red, same deal. I'm going to get random red to be 0, 1, or 2. 0, 1, or 2. And then I set up my colors. So I want a random blue color. I wanted it to be enough blue that uh, you could still see it, right? So using the red, green, blue scale, RGB, um, the first number in this is the red. The second number is the green. And the third number, right, RGB, is blue. So 255 is the max, zero is the minimum. So I want it to be between 100 and 255 for blue and 100 and 255 for red. And I wanted them to be a different shade. So I let them each get their own variable for a random number for that. And those change each time we hit what button? Play. Now let's set up a property. So set property blue. Well, what has the ID blue? This, right? This hand is the ID of blue. We're going to set the image to hands what's hands uh, uh oh yeah it's this variable up here and inside of a function it can still get this variable because it's a global variable at the top hands random blue okay well what was random blue uh, uh oh here's random blue oh yeah it's a number between zero and two that will be different each time i click play 
So we'll say this time it's 1, so 0, 1. So actually we'll go off this. Okay, my hands rock. So we'll say it was 1. We'll say it's 0. So hands, random blue was 0. So it looks for hands, 0. Got it. Puts that there, sets the image, the blue image, to the hand rock image. Now we set the property of red. What's red? Yep, it's the red hand. So it goes, okay, grab red. What property am I going to change? It's image property, right? So we're talking about red's image property. It's in design, but we can change it through code. And what are we going to change it to? Oh, hands random red. Oh, well, what's random red? I'll use this. So it's scissors. So we'll say this was random red is equal to two this turn. So it said hands random red, uh, hands zoop, random red, uh, zero, one, two, scissors. And so now red hand becomes scissors. Now we do the same with color. We set the property of blue, the icon color of blue to what? Well, zero red, right, RGB, so zero red, zero G or zero green, and blue color for B. What's blue color? It's between 100 and 255. It randomly changes a bit. We're going to do the same for red, except we use red color to set that color. And then we run another function. This is round winner, and we use these two arguments, random blue, random red. So what this says to the computer is, hey, look for a function called round winner. And once you find it, give it these variables, random blue, random red. Well, what's random blue? Oh, random blue is that number between 0 and 2, and random red is going to be between 0 and 2. So we're going to call ran round winner, random blue, and give it that info. Okay, well, where is that? Uh, boom. That's the function we're calling. Okay. So now we're we'll hit this function, player 1. Okay, that's going to be random blue. Player 2, that's random red. Got it. If player one equals two equals sign is the equality operator. I'm asking the computer, hey, does player one equal player two? So does the number, what that really means, player one, player one's blue, random blue was that number. Player two is player two is random red is random red's number. So what this really means is the random red player one uh, random blue number equal to the random red number. Two equals means an equal sign. One equals creates a variable. So we're comparing. If they are equal, I say return because I want to get out of this function. No one won that round. It's a tie. We don't need to do anything. But if not, so if they are equal, return. And then I would just leave this function. I wouldn't run any of this code. And we'd be but until the person hit play again. But if not, zero is rock. One is paper. Two is scissors. How do I know? Zero index rock. 1 index paper, 2 index scissors. Okay, so variable blue win. If player 1 equals 0, so if player 1 is a rock, then the computer will be like, oh, okay, player 1, random blue. So if random blue was 0, it's going to go inside of this code. We're asking the computer a question. If the question is true, if the computer hits this code and says, yes, player 1 is 0, it says true, and it runs this code. And right now, well, yeah, that's true. So true, and we'll start looking at this code now. If player 2 equals 1, if player 2 equals 1, 1 is, uh, pa hand is paper. So does player 2 equal 1? No, the random number we pass to this for red is not going to be a 1. So this is false. And if it is false, the computer says, okay, I'm not going to run the code in there. That's false. And then we hit else if. Okay, well, is player 2 equal, is equal equal to 2? Well, yes, yeah, scissors is 2. So if that is true, which that is, yes, the computer says, yes, that's true. We hit this, and then we run the code in here. And the code in here is to set blue win equal to true. So we're taking this variable that we have up here, and we're going to make it equal to true. And you'll see why in a second. I noticed something that I did. I'm going to switch to text mode real quick. And so if you notice, I have a lot of if statements. If player... 1 equals equals 0. And then beneath that, I have if player 1 equals equals 1. Well, if player 1 equals 0, they're not going to equal 1. I shouldn't ask the computer to check, hey, does player 1 equals 0? And if it says yes, I don't want to then say, hey, does player 1 equal 1? Well, I just said it equals 0. No, it doesn't equal 1. So a better way to do this is an else statement. And that tells the computer, hey, only check this thing if this was not true, because they're both not going to be true. So else if, that would be a better way to do that. And then else if,
and that would be a default. So that should do it. And then we still have an if and an else if inside. Yep. And so now if this is true, we'll still run this code inside, check if player two is one, which would be um, paper or two, which is scissors. If this is true, if player one is equal to one, and we'll skip it. So let's say player one is a rock. We're now, once we run all this, we're done. We're not going to check everything else like we were before because we have else statements. So if this is true, we'll skip the rest of it after running the code inside. If it's not true, we'll still, we'll check here. And if that's not true, we'll still check here. But if this is true, we'll run all that code inside and skip the rest because we have else now. All right, now back to this. So when one of these is true and blue either becomes false or blue becomes true, because because the rock and paper, scissors, right? I'm setting it up to be equal to true. Blue is true when blue is something that beats red. So if blue is a rock and red is scissors, for example, that's what we did here. And that's when blue equals true. So now it would go to the bottom and we check if blue win. Well, what's blue win? Oh, well, blue win will be equal to true because... If player two equals equals two and player one equals equals zero, that's what we have. Zero, remember in our array was rock, two, zero, one, two was scissors. So player one was rock, player two was scissors, blue win equals true. So if blue win, yes, that is true. So we would then drop it and run this code. If blue win equals false, if blue win because we lost, it would say if blue win false, that's false. And then it would drop below and run the code in the else statement. All right, so the code in the else statement adds one point to red score. The code in the regular statement adds one point to the blue score. Then what do we do with that score? Well, if we add a point to the blue score, we take the blue score, we set the, which is over here, we take the text and we change it to what our blue score equals or to the red. And remember, we'll only run one of these, right? If this is true, we'll just run this code and skip the rest. If this is false, we skip this code and run this. And then, boom, we're at the bottom, and the player can press, well, play again. Boom, 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 point, point, uh, tie, tie, ooh, lots of ties. Uh, oh, they got a point. Oh, I'm not doing good. Oh, <laughs> oh, better. This is not going my way. I'm just going to keep going till I start winning. Ooh, I'm doing better. Uh, would... All right, I'll just give up. You get the picture. Um, I'll post it in the description below. Try it out. Play with the code yourself. Don't just copy and paste the code. That is plagiarism. But make it your own. Build something awesome. Steal some ideas. Post your project below. I'm excited to see what you do with it. Enjoy your coding and codish stuff and code. <laughs> but uh.